guys, welcome to Tiny Chick Pottery Channel. I hope you're well. I just kind of wanted to share a little bit with you about what's going on inside me and I hopefully I can be an accompaniment to your work today. You can just listen in and we'll have a talk. What I'm wondering about you, dear viewer, is are your hopes and dreams similar to mine? Do you want to make a full-time living as a professional artist? I do, I really do. I really feel like creativity is my spirit, but also I want to be a business person. And I, I know that I excel in the putting out creative work. I can make lots and lots of things, but as a business person, I feel that's where I'm kind of lacking. I'm lacking in the interest to try and sell and to try and, um, you know, make a whole living off of it. It's that part that at that point, it just feel it feels like a slog at that point. Just something I just don't want to do. And do you feel that way sometimes? Is it is that the hard part for you? I do find that I enjoy when people want to buy something and own it. It's the marketing part that for me is like it is difficult. I uh, I've talked about my sources of income before, and I think it's really it's actually quite interesting. So I've got these doodles that I draw. I usually draw them digitally. Sometimes I draw them on paper and I just photograph them and bring them into Facebook. But I have people, they're called art patrons or doodle art patrons or whatever I call them each day. But each day I go out and draw a new doodle and I tag these people. And I worked it out because I had done this thing where I did 365 days of doodles. And I use those doodles on some of my pottery and sometimes I just paint colors on my pottery because honestly, those sell better than the ones with the doodles. Although last night I did sell the one with the living room scene, not this one, this one's obviously a laundry room scene, this is a painting, but I eventually will probably use pieces of this in a uh, on a mug or something like that. But yeah, I was so excited to sell that one last night. Thank you, Suki, for buying it, yay! Anyway, <laughs> it was really, it's hard to sell a really expensive mug. I, I guess you guys know this because you probably, you know, if you put too many hours of work into it, you have to start, charge a certain price for it. And then it, then you have to wait. Then you have to wait for somebody with that much money to come along and actually say, the thing that you made is something that I need in my life. It, I was delighted and it's touching, you know? So there's the second version. The second thing that I do is like, I'll sell a piece of pottery that also helps pay the rent and the expenses. Being a potter, you probably have an amazing, you are a potter, I assume, since you're watching this, but you have an amazing glaze collection, right? You have probably more money in glazes than you have in clothing. That's just how we are. You need money for that. You need to you need to support it. How are you going to pay for that? Are you going to sell pots to do it? I, I get money in, in a variety of ways. Well, the first one is like for the roof over my head, I have a husband and he has a really good job, but he needs a wife who has flexible schedules so that he needs me to do all the other stuff so he can focus fully on his career because he's he's the breadwinner and he has to sometimes he has to travel he just needs a support system at home somebody can make appointments and can you know be here when a contractor comes to the house or or whatever i need my studio space because our house doesn't fit all my pottery stuff all my painting stuff my jewelry equipment everything mostly my website i sell pottery through my website or i sell my classes through my website Every single thing in my inventory is in my website, and I use my website's point of sale system. It's a Wix site, W-I-X, and I use the, I have one of those little square credit card readers, so I can do checkout at the, at the studio space. When somebody comes in, they can pay me there, and I can run the card, and that um, updates my inventory. So I only have inventory in one digital place, which is really really smart you guys if you can find a way to do it that way so that you don't have to constantly like update your inventory trust me it has saved me a ton of headaches i also teach some pottery classes and some art classes the third way i told you i have sponsors so i convince those sponsors to pay me about 30 dollars a month to tag them every time i make a doodle online which i do every day pretty much every day. Some days if I don't do a doodle, like I'll post a video and I'll tag them in that and I'll post it and they'll get the attention that they need because what they need is their name dropped on Facebook in front of 14,000 to, yeah, it's like 14, 15, 16,000 people. 
that I can that I have access to and they see my doodles. There's a local page that lets me put my cartoons up on it. It's a really great thing, you guys. You should try it. Just don't do it in my town because I got the this is my spot. You go find your town. If I can get nine sponsors, that's about half my rent, I think. And then I still need money for supplies. So then I also teach one teenager an art class. I do a one-on-one -on -one art class because this kid has promise. She's from Namibia. She's really cool, and it's um, it's just really, it's a joy to teach her. Other than that, I'm not really big about teaching classes to kids because most kids are not this mature, and they they just want to screw around. They're not they're not interested in art. That, that it doesn't, there's not really a spark there. Their parents used to just drop them off, I swear, because my prices were so low on teaching art classes back then. I was charging $10 a class. The parents would drop off their kids just to keep their kids busy. It wasn't about art. The kids would literally, middle schoolers would literally turn on TikTok and start fooling around. One would roll around on the floor, just screwing around like, I'm tired. And roll, oh my gosh, it was a nightmare for me. And then, you know, really little kids, obviously they don't have the focus. They're not interested. I want to, I want somebody who thinks art's cool. Art's fun. You know, let's talk about colors. Let's talk about, you know, which colors are cool. Which ones are warm? Which ones like make it look like there's a distance in the, and which ones pull your eye in closer and, you know, that kind of thing. I mean... Some people love that. My student from Namibia, she loves that. She just moved to the United States. She's, you know, everything's new here. So we have so much to talk about. It's very exciting. I also, I teach these pottery classes where, uh, the wet clay classes where they, they come in. I teach them on the pottery wheel. I only have one wheel. So each student gets a certain amount of time on the wheel, like 10 minutes in the class. And then the other kid gets on the wheel and I help them because it's just like a beginner's thing. They do two classes. They do a white clay class, and then I bisque fire it, and then they do uh, putting on glazes, and then I get it fired again. They just come for a pickup when it's done. I can do that at $35 per class, or I do a class where you pay by, um, you can look on my website to see how much it costs. I have stoneware that I bought pre-made, and people can come in and just do one class and just paint on that, and then they can come back and pick it up as, after it's been fired to uh, Cone 6. That stoneware class is, is great for the people who just want to, they just want to play. You know, the other people, if they're really interested in doing like a long-term pottery thing, there is a pottery school. Like, there is a pottery place where people can join and be members and stuff. One town over, it's like 30 minutes away. And that's great for them, like if, if for those people. But people that just want to do it one-off, they come to me. Okay, you guys, getting monetized on YouTube is hard. I have one monetized channel. I was able to get monetized before they raised the bar. You used to need 1,000 watch time hours and 1,000 subscribers, I think. And I have now this new channel, this Tiny Chick Pottery channel. I was like, I did it once, I can do it again. So this one has plenty of subscribers. I've got plenty of subscribers now. I just need more watch time hours to get monetized. I mean, I can always use more subscribers if you love me and you know you're interested in hearing more of my thoughts on the subject. Please, you know, go ahead and subscribe if you want, if you're going to watch. If you're not going to watch, you know, don't subscribe. I mean, it's up to you. But, and it's free, obviously. <laughs> you just need a YouTube account and you can subscribe to whatever you want. My one channel, the Julie Silversmith channel, I was able to get monetized and it it pays me a portion that I use towards my rent every month also. It's not as big a portion as my sponsorships because sponsorships are every month and YouTube actually, I don't even get paid out every month. So it's not, it's not a ton of money, but it totally helps. And what YouTube is paying on is ad revenue. So everybody that watches the ad or watches part of the ad before my video starts and maybe if there's an ad at the end or if my video is long enough, there's an ad in the middle are basically, it's giving me like a fraction of a penny or maybe a penny or something for that view. And then, you know, that's, that's money that goes towards my studio. This channel is doing awesome so far. I do need, ugh, I, I don't know how to do it. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm learning. I don't know how to make better videos yet. I really want to give you like the best content possible. <laughs> I just don't know how to make a more exciting video. This is just me talking to you about like my love of art and pottery and stuff. And I need 600 more watch time hours to get this channel monetized so that it brings in another small amount of money. So I don't know how much effort I should focus on it. You tell me if you know, how much effort should I focus on this? If you have topics that you think that I can make a video about, that you're interested in, that you think I know about, I will get on that. 
Uh, people asked me for a video on how to pack pottery so that it wouldn't break. And I made a really good video on that topic. I made a really good video about how you can uh, make pottery at home and pretty simply. Oh, there is a piece of information that I can give you that you might not know. Say you want to make pottery, but you don't make pottery yet because you can't afford a pottery kiln. If you call your pottery supply store that's nearby you, they have lists of people who offer firing services. You get to use their kiln, basically. I have more pottery than I can fire in my tiny kiln at home, so I use pottery firing services at Creative Catalyst in Arlington, Texas. Sometimes I take an art commission or I take a commission to like draw the design for a t-shirt or um, draw some like business logo or draw something in graffiti. Only digital kind. I don't do graffiti with spray paint. I don't know how to do that yet. Or if I'm ever going to learn that, I don't know. My whole goal is to sell art and to be really marketable. I can't do paintings like this one that I'm doing on here. I can't do mugs with like very detailed paintings on it because per unit, it's really hard to sell a $5,000 mug. So part of me now, and I'm going to share this whole process with you, part of what I'm going to be doing is going to be attempting to learn how to paint abstract art because it can take less time than something very detailed like this. And it is more broadly purchasable. Um, they can buy it. It can go with their couch. I know how awful that sounds to a, an art person, but it can be appreciated and you can sell them faster and they are cheaper to make probably and just less time consuming than these very detailed paintings if I do it right. Then if I can sell a large painting like this, this one I think is a 24 by 36. If I can sell paintings this size for $2,000 to $5,000, I have to sell fewer items in order to cover my studio rent and then hopefully have money to take home in the end. So I just started a series of five large paintings in the abstract and people really liked them last night. Let me tell you about what happened last night. I do get a few sales of sterling silver jewelry because I used to make sterling silver jewelry and now I'll just like put together earrings and things like that. I've got some really cute earrings on my website, which is tinychickpottery.com. If you need Christmas gifts, uh, they're not too expensive, but, and they, they typically it's uh, because it's sterling silver and it's not coated in anything. It's rhodium free. It won't irritate people's ears. So you will find that they are great gifts and really, you know, I have really fun colors of crystal earrings. And if you, you know, if you want to support the channel in that way, or, you know, if you just want a great gift, you can go check those out on my website. It's a flat $10 shipping price. So load up your cart and make it worth it. Um, if you are, you know, in need of a free shipping code or you, you want to, you know, negotiate, send me a message. Okay, you guys are here for the pottery. Let me show you the pottery that I recently made. Here are chun plum with blue rutile and oatmeal bowls and a heart. This is under glaze with zinc-free clear made by Amico on top. And then more with the chun plum uh, ring holders. And you can see I, I show all sides of it. So I kind of make these kind of videos and stick them on the Tiny Chick Pottery page on Facebook to kind of show off what merchandise is going to be available in my store. And I have already added all of these to the inventory on tinychickpottery.com. And, you know, on there, if you're a potter, you probably don't buy other people's pottery unless you're like totally blown over by it. And if you are, you know, or you're just interested to see how much I charge for stuff, you can totally go on there and look. That's my display that I have in my studio. This is is a doodle that I did. I started it in pencil on paper and then I scanned it and I brought it into my iPad and then I made it digital so that I could edit it and make it better. So I'm gonna quickly skip ahead on this one. And now I have the ability to travel with my husband. So I take my iPad along with me and I can produce art and come up with ideas for the doodles that'll go on my pottery while I'm on the road. and. And while I'm, you know, if I get stuck in the hotel or, oops, sorry about that. that I forgot I did that. <laughs> it was a beautiful sunrise from our 12th story room. And we got to go to San Antonio recently and it was really, really cool. And it's just, it's neat to be able to be a digital nomad and, you know, go places and produce art and then come back to my studio with my ideas and 
work them out on these giant canvases. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I don't want to keep you any longer uh, rattling on about what's going on with me. I'd sure love to know how you work out being a potter and also having a life and and what you do. And do you have a studio space or do you work out of your house? And, and what kind of things do you do? And if you have a website, would you share that with me in the comments? I'm uh, Just tell me what your web address is. And if it doesn't let you you know, type it in with the, uh, and put a link, just go ahead and put spaces between the words and I'll figure it out and I'll find your website so I can check it out and see what you do. I'm totally interested in knowing more about you and, and, you know, like what kind of potter you're making and what your interests are. And if you like this channel and if you want to come back for more, if you don't, you can just take off. You don't need to tell me that's, you know, this is not an airport. <laughs> I'm just really happy to, to share my journey with you and my really freaking cool art space and some of the new abstract art that I'm working on that I think is freaking cool. <laughs> yeah. And I just hope you're having a, I, have, I hope you're having a good life. And I hope that, you know, while you're working on your pottery, you can just you know, listen to my channel and we can share with each other. And if, when you get your hands clean, you can send me a message and let me know, like, you know, what your interests are and stuff. That would be so helpful to me. And I just really appreciate spending time with you. Thanks for being here. Let's take it outside and see how it looks. It looks way bluer out here, but that's what I wanted. Kind of a more of a seascapey kind of bright colors. I think maybe you better just come see it in person because it looks really different through the camera and, and from what I'm looking at it. Once this has a clear coat varnish on it, it's going to pop. It's